Hello and welcome to this video. So this is going to be a pretty short one, or at least I hope it will. So uh, have you ever heard of a 3D printer? Now I'm pretty sure you have. Uh, those are like the big ones that you just print layer by layer and you have to design a model previously to do it. It's, it's pretty computer and software oriented, alright? Uh, but have you ever wondered, I, I'm pretty sure some people have, because I surely have when I was in school, uh, I've always like imagined just taking my pencil and writing in the air, you know, just like literally just writing in the air like Doraemon or some cartoons like that. So I've wondered about this very like ever since I was a kid and apparently pens like that do exist. It's literally just a 3D printing pen. It's just plastic that you just print out, it just melts and then it just, you know, solidifies into an object that you can literally print in thin air, except it needs like a ground surface for it to actually go up. So I have one of those and these aren't too expensive at all. This is a 3D printing pen like uh, like what I mentioned. Uh, it's actually pretty, it's not, it's not that expensive at all and that's pretty, sub it's pretty su surprising. Uh, because there are different types of it. This is just like the normal injector stuff. Uh, there are other stuff that uh, you print it out and then you shine a UV uh, light on it and then it hardens. But this will harden as soon as it just comes out. So I think this is this might be a little bit more convenient for someone like me. So uh, let's just uh, check it out. And here we go. So this is the 3D printing pen and this is just a normal 12 volt uh, power supply that I could just use with the barrel jack and you just apply it here and you can probably see that there's another hole and this is where the actual filament goes uh, I don't really have those uh, small ones that you use for the actual 3D printing pen but you could just use these ones, these massive loops that you use for the big ones uh, it'll, it may be a little bit uh, annoying for it to just you know roll around but you just gotta do what you just have to do with what you have so I'm, I'm just gonna be using this and to show you about the 3D printer itself, this is a green light uh, that just shines uh, because it just shows that it's on. Right now the power is flowing through it but it's not hot at all because I can touch it over here. Uh, for it to turn on, I must click this button. This is the insert button. So when I click this, a motor will rotate inside this thing here and it will just you know input the filament. This is the opposite, it just brings it out. Uh, there's a little potentiometer in here which controls the temperature but I've just left it on full. So this is the speed of the actual retraction and uh, input. So this is at high speed, it just brings the filament outside at a higher speed and this will do it at a lower speed. And that's pretty much it for the controls of this thing. So now let's just uh, turn it on, I guess. So as, we, as soon as you click it here, there's a red colored button which means it's heating up right now, which means it's, it will be pretty dangerous to touch this part. It's heating up slowly and it, takes, it doesn't take long, a long time at all. It'll quickly heat up and this will turn green, which means we're ready to use it. I wonder if you can see that. I've been actually using this thing for a while, so uh, it just leaks these uh, the sort of filament. It's green in color now, so that means uh, we're ready to use it. So we just bring this filament in towards here and then we click this button, it will turn on and we just put this in full speed now as you can see it's going in and it works perfectly. And I guess I don't really have an idea of what to do and I, since I want to make this a pretty short video it doesn't really matter I guess. Uh, but this is the problem with uh, very inexpensive 3D printers, this is the problem. I'm not even clicking anything but it will start leaking uh, because this part isn't valved or controlled or regulated at all. So it'll just keep leaking, but it's not that big of a deal if, you, if, I, if I'm being honest here. Yeah. So now I guess we could just start actually printing something. Uh, just to show you guys how this works and just to showcase it, I guess we could just make a little uh, square. So let's just clean the surface over here. Uh, it, this sort of printers, if you have used 3D printers before, it actually sticks a lot on paper. I've tried it on paper, it's just really really bad. So. I've tried this sort of plastic and mica, it works best in my opinion, so, uh, so let's start. I'm not the best at printing this, alright, just, just to let you know. So I have learned that uh, the filament actually gets printed out best when you actually touch the injector to the actual surface right before it gets printed out. 
so it's just like that so it works perfectly if you do this and I've actually used this sort of uh, 3d printer on on a lot of different uh, applications this is a perfect glue you guys seriously like if you if you didn't know about this this, this thing works as an ama amazing like super glue basically it's a super glue which is just in different colors and it looks good so uh, that's another application that I have tried uh, this thing leaks a lot you guys seriously okay now I guess we could just make this a little bit more sturdier it's beautiful seriously I'll show you what happens if we do it the opposite way uh, what happens it's just like uh, using a pencil when you're left-handed it just gets smudged you see uh, so it's always best if you go for, if you're a right-hander it's always best if you go from left to right kind of just like it's exactly like writing so this is actually very intricate and I guess you could actually call it art it's actually really really nice and I, I, just, I just love doing this obviously it's just not making shapes like this this is just a complete waste of uh, time and filament uh, but I have made once the Eiffel Tower uh, I don't have any footage about that. That's in uh, that's in a different place right now. So what you can do is uh, let me just show you how you could make a pyramid, for example. Now this is the first time I'm doing it, so please go easy on me. Just make four triangles of preferably the same size. And before you let it open, you just have to wait for a little while until it gets cooled down and just quickly remove it. So now this is one of those three sides, one of the four sides, sorry. And here we have one. Now let's just do another one of the same size, hopefully. <laughs> Not good at this stuff. Alright, so let me just let that cool down for a bit, until then I will make another one over here. Right, perfect. That actually came out way better than I thought, now I'll just remove this. Now, as you can see, I have a few different triangles here and actually these came out really better than I thought, honestly, I'm not even joking. So, uh, hopefully this video isn't getting too long, oh my god, this video is already too long. So, we just do this now. Uh, let's bring this thing out, hopefully it has cooled. Yeah, it's alright. Okay, let's just flatten it out and... Let's put on the actual uh, triangles one by one. And to actually glue it down, I'll be using the exact same uh, filament. So it'll just look nice and uniform. Now lining up the incline might be a little bit hard. But I guess it doesn't have to be perfect. I just dumped a lot of uh, filament here. Let me just zoom in to show you that. Oops. Alright, so now let me just do the other side. So now let me just show you the other side and you know, very close up. As you can see, I'm just dumping a sh uh, like a crap load of. Uh, filament and just hold it with your hand to just let it cool a little bit
All right, so all four uh, bottoms have been uh, glued, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> so, as you can see, the top actually isn't very well aligned. So it's, it might be, it might be a problem, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to put this down like that. I'll just zoom in a little bit. I hope you can, can see very well. And I will just, just slather it with filament. Boom, it's done. Now <laughs> that is my, uh, the not so great pyramid of uh, India. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that was something, uh, was it? I don't know. Right, so uh, it's done. Uh, obviously it's, it's very, very rudimentary, right? And it's not perfect at all. But what it is, it's not trying to be perfect at all. It's not trying to be amazingly accurate or anything. What it is trying to be is fun and it's, a perfect kid's toy, I guess. It, it does get really hot, so I guess it's not really a kid's toy. It's more like with adult supervision, but it is kind of fun. It's very gimmicky, it's very niche. You do not need this in your life at all. It's not really that important for anything. You can't really make anything practical, practical with it. But if you're in a situation where you need a 3D model of something very simple and you just need to show it to a friend or a, I guess an employer or something, a very lenient employer, you could just, you know, just get one of these and just print it out with your hand and just, you know, yeah, this is what the pyramid of uh, of India is going to look like. You can just show it to them and just, you know, and if you don't, if, if, if you can't show them a 3D model, for example. I don't know, guys. I'm just trying to make up excuses for what you could use this for. And it, it seems pretty fun to me. I've made an Eiffel Tower which looked a lot better when, like a few years ago. But I'm here in quarantine. I just found this in my attic. So... I just thought I'd make a video about it and hopefully it was kind of informative. Uh, by the way, did you know that uh, this is a fun fact about the Great Pyramid of Giza? All right? Did you know that the Great Pyramid of Giza is exactly aligned with the uh, constellation of Orion? Yeah, it's exactly, con like, exactly aligned in the night sky with that star. So they were actually able to do it in the in, like freaking millions of uh, thousands of years ago. And did you also know that it took 2.5 million cut blocks of stone, million, 2.5 million blocks of stone and they built it like little by little from the bottom to the top and they didn't have any machinery, they didn't have any cranes or anything, they just completely did it with pulleys and you know just snap blocks and stuff like that. It's really cool, really really high end engineering for their time and it's still, it's still really surprising for us. We still don't know how they built it, alright and it was the tallest structure in the entire world for 3,600 years. That's crazy. This is one of the greatest structures and the most uh, uh, imaginative and creative structures in the entire world. This is one of the things that humankind has to be proud of themselves. So, And I've just made it with plastic out of my hand using a small little printer. That just shows you how, how, how quick and advanced human race have become, you know? It's crazy. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. That's it for this video. I hope it was short. I don't know. I have to check. Uh, do the subscribe thing, like thing, everything. Just uh, anyways, thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye.